Each year, cyber attacks are becoming costlier and more prevalent than ever. From ransomware to ever presence of data breaches and trade secret thieves, companies uh, require better security services that cover the growing complexity of their networks and operations. Today, we are glad to have Mr. Sebastian, the manager of solutions engineering at Akamai, one of the largest players when it comes to a network and enterprise technology. How are you, Mr. Sebastian? And we welcome you in with Minatec today. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. What about yourself? Thank you, thank you so much. I'm I'm uh, I'm good. Um, let's start with first question. Please introduce yourself and give us a brief about uh, Akamai and and yourself, of course. So I'm Sebastian. <clears throat> I, as you said, I'm a manager of solutions engineering team uh, that work in the Meta region, uh, and I'm at Akamai for the last uh, six years almost. And um, my background is about, you know, uh, security, content security, DRM, and now Attack MI, uh, I'm protecting websites and life online in general. Looking back at the sum of the major attacks in the past few years, it is like indubitably clear that many uh, relate uh, on a human error. Everything is like relied. A lot of these, these attacks uh, relied on a human error. What to be done uh, to just prevent uh, the risks of human mistakes in cybersecurity? Yeah, human error and, and social engineering malicious activities are part of our reality. Uh, and every organization needs to live with that. So uh, the question is not about if you're going to be uh, hacked or if organization will try to hack you, but the, more, the question is more when will it happen? So, you know, it's important uh, to remember that when it comes to security, uh, you know, large organizations who have employees such as uh, accountant, lawyers, nurses, salespeople uh, are being asked to identify clever criminal activities. Um, so, which is something that is well outside their normal job function. So we should focus on trying to ensure that we can provide them the best available environment for, for our employees to work in. So having a zero trust activity approach is one way uh, to drastically reduce the risk, the risk mentioned here. Zero Trust Architecture strongly authenticates on a continuous basis every user and, and limits their access only to what they need to access, which again uh, reduces the risk in case of, uh, you know, um, injections or, 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 or intrusion. You mentioned, uh, or you're talking about zero security, uh, zero trust security. The term has been widely used in security circles recently. To be honest, how does Akamai define zero trust security? Like, could you elaborate on uh, what zero trust means and what differentiates it from the, uh, the traditional security approaches, such as uh, perimeter security, let's say? Yeah, sure. Why? You know, the, the, the traditional model uh, is part of secure perimeter, which uh, is housing assets and users inside this perimeter. All of this protected by a technology uh, like VPN. The shift of uh, to a remote or hybrid workforce means that the perimeter no longer exists. I mean, we've seen that during the pandemic. Uh, and neither does the safety net in that case. So zero trust, means that a removing location as an arbiter of trust in the corporate world, uh, which means that being in the office does not grant you more trust than if you are connecting from home or, or, or from an hotel when you are doing a business trip. Um, <clears throat> it also means that every request that are done by the end user uh, to use an application or, or, or to access a server must be authenticated. Uh, so at Akamai, we think that continuous authentication and authorization is a key aspect of zero trust. It allows the system to check whether the individual is ex exactly who they say they are uh, and is entitled to access a set of given assets. When you're mentioning uh, like um, uh, zero trust security, also I have like a small question about that. And how can zero trust security help with the new security challenges, such as remote uh, remote work and uh, the need to access assets and the networks from around the world? 
Well, remote workforce and cloud strategies, you know, dramatically impact IT architecture and those changes obviously uh, impact the security strategies of the companies. So users and applications are no longer defined by location, as I was telling uh, previously. As a result, we can no longer use traditional perimeter-based security practices, and then it can significantly in their progress if you try to do so. So one of the zero trust principles is not to trust the device because every device can be uh, compromised. So end users are allowed to access only the application they need to access by continuously authenticating them. Zero trust also routes the traffic through the corporate network only when it needs to go through it, which is barely the case if you are accessing you know, cloud applications. So this is a huge advantage in order to preserve the corporate network from outsiders, if you compare that with traditional VPN, of course. As you mentioned in general, like zero, we, we, we talk a lot about zero security, uh, zero trust security in, in, in general. So I have another question about that. Like many companies see security measures and approaches such as zero trust security as it's like a fix all solution for their systems. Can zero trust or any other approaches mitigate uh, the need uh, to focus on employee security training? Like it will be very important for the training on this kind of stuff. Well, you know, uh, training is important, but, you know, and, and Zero Trust is not, you know, ripping out everything, all the system you invested in uh, in the past year and replacing that with a shiny new toy. And then, you know, in two years from now, there, when there will be a new trend, you will throw that in the basket as well. It's, it's not about that. Train, uh, Zero Trust is, is my own mindset to, to adopt. Um, and training employees is also a key factor, as I was saying, to that will help companies to protect their perimeter, to protect their infrastructure. But, you know, a one hour training session every six months is not really going to move the needles in terms of uh, effective detection of malicious activity. And I, I told before as well that um, um, training a lawyer or nurse or, or, or doctor on IT risk uh, you know, it's challenging uh, because it's not the core of their business. So the first key to understand is where are your assets, your data, your application and, and the platform and users. Um, it is essential to know exactly what you have and to put the tools in place to make sure that uh, uh, you know what your user need to access, what application they need and what data you are trying to control. Um, so, uh, consider what you already have in order to build this zero trust approach. Uh, many tools and controls, you know, that are already existing can be used to, to, to build your zero trust approach. Um, for example, IDP, SSO, endpoint management, uh, everything, you know, all, all these tools are already existing. So that will help you identify those uh, movement within the infrastructure that you will need to secure uh, and, 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 and other systems like the Rotrust solution that are proposed on the market will um, enforce that on top of what is already, already existing. With the security landscape getting more complicated by the day, is it uh, still possible for the large organization to rely only on internal security terms or a single security solutions provider. What do you have in mind in that? On that, yeah, you know there are so many components at stake uh, in, in a large organization or even in a medium-sized organization, and and if you take that into account, each and every organization have a different architecture, a different infrastructure, because of their own constraint, because of the type of their business. So uh, you're right to mention that. Uh, security architecture and constraints of a retailer, for example, with hundreds of retail stores are not the same than a pure player with uh, three offices location and one data center for infrastructure. It's not, it's completely different. So, um, uh, and for a large retailer with hundreds of shops, uh, in order to understand, you know, to map their assets, to know what the, 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 the user need to access, which machine they need to access, what are the, uh, um, the workflow between end user and server. 
is a big challenge for the security team. If you have only one team that take that has this mission to uh, identify your workflow uh, with, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of employees uh, to understand how they are working. I mean, it's it's a five year project. So uh, the other solutions that are proposed on the market allow business teams to set their own access rules to their own teammates and partners. And uh, in that way, implementations are faster, more agile and closer to the need of the field. So that that's also a way why uh, zero trust systems that are on the market um, are, are allowing large organizations to ease the implementation of such uh, uh, an approach. As we all currently know, Uber was recently hacked using relatively simple methods, let's say, that allowed a sole, uh, a sole attacker uh, to gain admin privilege to multiple systems in the company. Such an incident can be uh, like, let's say, uh, uh, devastating for most companies. How does Akamai help its clients avoid such a disastrous, uh, disastrous uh, outcomes? Well, Uber Bridge is still under investigations, uh, uh, so it's hard to give a definitive answer. Uh, what we know today is is that uh, the hackers succeeded to get Uber contractors' credentials, uh, mm -hmm. either through password stealing malware or on the dark web. We don't know that yet. Well, thanks God, the, the hacker has been arrested by the police yesterday or yeah. today. Um, but still. Um, this hack is will, will give the industry a lot of knowledge and a lot of learning. Uh, um, so, but still, you know, uh, zero trust is uh, one of the key uh, approach that could have maybe not avoided this hack, but at least minimized the scale of this hack. So, um, uh, but you know, zero trust policy is multifold. Uh, each one being complementary to one another. So one approach, you know, Attack MI typically aims at securing infrastructure against malware uh, by controlling, you know, north source access from employees on suspicious websites through uh, uh, a secure internet access solution, for example. Um, a comp complementary approach is the focus on least privilege and how to reduce the risk of compromise by only allowing access to a limited number of applications and not the entire network. So this is a fundamental first step that takes a lot of the risk out of your network and gets to one of the key elements of Zero Trust. It ultimately authorizes only a defined list of lateral movement or also known as east-west movement. Uh, and so if you combine that with a strong multi-factor authentication system uh, like you know, that relies on FIDO2, for example, uh, uh, that can drastically reduce the risk of hacks. Of course, it doesn't prevent all the risk. And uh, as I told you at the beginning, um, it, it's not a 100% one, uh, bulletproof, you know, shield, but uh, still, you know, that it's all, security is all about, all about risk management. And if you combine all those solutions together um, that we provide at Akamai, uh, you have like a, a, a good protection, I would say. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for your time. It was a pleasure to meet you. And it was very, very good information about cybersecurity in general and about Akamai. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, anytime at your disposal to, to continue the discussion. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.